Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization VI as a, the friendly Ottoman Empire. And our goal today is to try to capture as much of this free land, it's free real estate, as we can, as well as Georgia. Our goal is to try to get inroads into Georgia. Um, we have a lot of tools at our disposal to make that happen. We have artillery on the way. We have observation balloons on the way. We've just captured Johannesburg. This army is going to now relocate all the way over here. I need to think about uh, getting railroads up. We don't have much coal, which is a little bit of a problem. We haven't actually researched what gives us coal yet. So I would like to get coal power. Uh, I imagine coal power is actually this tech right here. So I'm going to go ahead and get starting to work on coal power. And I, I need railroads. Uh, it's kind of funny though in this game, um, railroads became before we actually had coal. So, you know, <laughs> a little bit of a, a, a logical, a logical fallacy, a logical flaw, logical, uh, or um, no, that's not the word I'm looking for. Not logical. Um, time continuum flaw something something or other uh, putting the cart before the horse uh lovely actually these guys have leveled up i'll take a few levels on these guys we'll blast adana adana has been blasted and reclaimed there's still a little bit of a loyalty issue in here but if i grab liang i hate to grab liang out of that city could i grab literally anyone else i would the only viable option would be to grab reina and since she doesn't yet have harbor master i think that's actually a valid thing to do and i'll put her into adana that'll give me 20 turns 20 whole turns to figure out what i'm going to do here in terms of loyalty the city should grow before that happens if i quickly grab myself a monument a granary and a watermill going to get all those things jazzed up and ready um, let's bring all the boats to the yard. Now we're going to bring them over to where we're going to be setting up. You go ahead and get in there. We've got a couple of repairs we need to make. A little bit of free city cavalry. Honestly, that's just an opportunity for me to level up my units. I need to think about how I'm going to attack the city of Kabul. I would like to do it with a few artilleries. Trebuchet. Well, I think I'm going to wait until mobilization before I commit to anything here. Let's get all of this artillery moving to the north alongside the cuirassiers. And then we'll have this swordsman parked in Johannesburg for loyalty. You're going to go ahead and place a mine right there. You're going to place a mine right there. You are heading to the front line. Excellent. You're waiting. You're going to be upgraded into an artillery and combined with this artillery, honestly. So I may as well upgrade you this turn. So we're prepped for that. Although I wanted to do it cheaper, but you know, we, we'll, we'll plug in cards later. Uh, we do have a little bit of a gold deficit, but we are going to start to recover that issue. Gelinus has been hit by a volcano, which is honestly a massive W for me. I'll take that dub and uh, we can start. We can basically use our little navy here to push west and we can start combining them together and making really, really powerful stuff happen. I'm loving the fact that my units are getting promotions it, because you get you get plus one error score for every time a military unit earns a promotion. So there's a level, uh, sorry, a, a commercial hope at four or higher adjacency. So that's excellent. And mobilization plugged in. Uh, we're going to go ahead and plug in levy on mass. We definitely need to keep Limitania. I think we can lose retainers as painful as that is because we really need to have professional army plugged in. I would love to take out serfdom. I would, oh God, I just, I'm going to take out liberalism. I'm gonna, I'm, we're going to be dropping down the amenities situation. Uh, well, no, I need the amenities. That's the thing. What I really need to do is to get to fascism. We found suffrage. We could dip into suffrage for a little while. It's not a bad government form. It's not bad at all. It does have their finest hour as a combat card. We could also go into communism. It's a little bit more militaristic. Let's go ahead and pick up. Uh, yeah. Uh, mm. Let's go for suffrage. No, 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 no. Am I going for suffrage or am I going for demo uh, class struggle? Communism would give me a better government for war in terms of policy cards, but democracy would give me a better government for war in terms of wild cards. Let's go to democracy. We'll go to democracy. We can pivot to fascism later. Right, we'll go ahead and build this. You're going this way. You're swooping back to become a bombard. There we go. Um, I need to find... Uh, I did not build enough unattached basic artillery, so let me look around. I need one, two, three, four, five unattached artillery so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come in here and i'm going to replace you that's two under construction we'll go ahead and grab a mani because she might be useful and then we'll keep this gang moving along the road we'll move this cuirassier along the coastline to get ready to capture gelinus loving the fact that we're going to be taking over this you move over here and become an armada perfect plus two error score amazing pop in there repair that fishing boat i'm feeling really 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 good about the current stance of the game can you kill him Kill there, combine there, you move forward. We'll be able to take Gelinus next turn. Um, we got the Art Museum in Rhodes, which means we should potentially look to buy great works of art. So like sculptures, portraits, landscapes, right? 
It looks like nobody actually wants to sell those to me. That's fine. Let's go ahead and continue to produce artillery. Since these artillery are getting combined, they don't need to be produced in cities that are like particularly important. And actually speaking of, I'm going to go ahead and transition to making um, artillery armies in here. I'm not going to be producing regular old artillery. I can produce those in my other cities. So these artillery armies, um, they cost... Now, now, just to kind of put the cost in perspective here, normally... Like I could probably do it with another unit. So if we take a look at the pike and shot, right? It's 250 production for a pike and shot. Normally to get a pike and shot core, you would have to build two pike and shot and combine them together. But that only costs 375 production. So you're going to get 50% discount on the second pike and shot. And then for the pike and shot army, you're actually getting less of a discount, believe it or not. But it still is slightly less. Yeah, you're getting basically a two for three discount here. You're getting a 1.5 for two discount here and then a two for three discount here roughly speaking that's not the exact maths in the way that it works out but that would be what i would get that's like the rough 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 maths there's probably some rounding going on here so for every one artillery ar artillery army i build here I'm getting three artillery for the price of two. Now, the one big downside of building armies is that it actually takes a really long time. Like if I build an artillery right now, just a regular old artillery, I'll have that in five turns. If I build an artillery army, it's going to take a very, very long time. So what I need to do is to... Oh yeah, I'm going to need to control Preslav. So I'll have to ha look into ways to do that because I'm missing out a lot of production there. But anyway, that's kind of like the little explanation of what's going on there behind the scenes. Yeah, let's get into position. I would like to have two artillery in position to hit that city before I declare the war because I don't I don't think there's much there's not much point in my opinion in bombarding a city with a single artillery you want to have at least two because it more than doubles the rate at which you kill the city I guess I could theoretically start the war now in a moment let's also make sure that we come in here and use our vast reserves of faith to buy artillery armies this is a way to circumvent how long it takes to build these things is um you can just like double purchase artillery armies with your stored faith so faith is like a unit bank right it's like a bank of a bank of units we can draw from. I think it would be really cool. Oh, do you know what would be a cool ability? Being able to upgrade units with faith. Now that would be that would be a cool ability to work into a sieve. I might even like I might even like DM one of the developers of sieve and be like, hey, yo, one of the really cool mechanics would be if, if there was a sieve that could upgrade units with faith. That doesn't necessarily mean upgrading them in the sense that they, like you you upgrade them to a higher technology level but like let's say you could invest faith into making your units better like that'd be kind of a cool idea i could finish this armory i'm not going to instead i'm going to build the arena for the plus two amenities it's time for me to get my zoo while this is not the greatest zoo in human history um it does hit four cities i will want a zoo in like the central area of my empire and so that's like having four more amenities it's quite good i also need to think about well, I'm probably spending most of my faith on military stuff, so I probably don't need to think about national parks. All right, Gelinus is defeated. Let's make sure we pillage this because, yep, there's printing plus three combat strength from diplomatic visibility. Gelinus is now mine. We're going to keep this city. Loyalty is an issue. Uh, we can solve this by moving Reina from Adana to Gelinus and we'll move Victor from there to Adana and by putting him in Adana his AoE loyalty will help us out we've got nine turns to move on to Isik. let's declare war on Kabul I know I said I wasn't going to do this this turn but I, I changed my mind I want to get in range and start blasting it's all about speed violence momentum now I need I need to be fast I need to be quick and I need to be viscerally viscerally unafraid observation balloons are coming loving that all right slam your units into me like I can give a damn It'll take a little while for us to plink down the city of Isik, but it will come down in time. It will come down. It'd be more efficient if I was using actual anti-city boats, but that's just not how I want to do things. Believe it or not, we can eat you. Yes. Come this way. Go there. You go there. Then we'll go ahead and eat you to become an army. You'll move in to take over the garrison of that city. You're heading this way. You're heading this way. You're heading down. Well, you need to heal up before you move up. No trade routes over here, or, or, or no roads over here, really, sadly. So I kind of have to, like, navigate my units around a little bit awkwardly. Go ahead and get that nighter repaired. Not much to pillage in the city of Kabul, just kind of a poor city, honestly. Has really good population, though, which is going to be useful because when we capture it... I believe the Ottomans have no population loss when they capture cities. Yeah. Uh, ca conquered cities don't lose population. And they have plus one amenity and... What was it? Uh, plus four loyalty per turn. God, that's so good, actually. In this particular game, it's so good. I would like you to level up uh, to steal technology. That would be quite handy. So we've got a better spy there. You need to hold that city for now you need to get these cities repaired we're finally getting around to some repairs and stuff like that i want you to gain sources in amanza congo so you can steal gold more effectively congo looks like he's getting ready to go to war with me um which is concerning he's moving units in that general direction there's steam power so we can start to build railroads although we'll need access to coal properly go ahead and yoink that unit 
Um, you can start blasting Kabul. So he's moving units towards me, which is a bit of a concern. He has 80 crew cores. Let's start moving defensive units to the south. I'm probably going to be drop. Yeah, I'm not getting the amenities. So all these range units are going to be heading south to become the main defenders of Johannesburg and that, which means I should probably come in here and repair these outer defenses when we get a chance. Uh, where is machine gun tech? Yeah, that'll be useful for defending. As much as I want industrialization, no, do you know what? The plus one production from mine improvements is actually too good. Um, I have a lot of mines in my empire. Like if I just do a little search, if I type in here, mine Ottoman, uh, there's 27 results for mines inside my territory. So that's 27 production per turn to research industrialization. But I will be going industrialization into advanced ballistics. Even though I'm supposed to be scouting what's in here because I'm looking for tanks, I want the advanced ballistics so that I can defend against this Congo attack. A couple of machine guns, like if I get machine guns, um, it means my city combat strength just goes up rapidly to a very, very high and useful degree. So we're not slamming into Kabul. We're just gently tapping away. We've got a ream of artillery heading the right way now. All right, yeah, go ahead and continue to steal gold from Georgia. A gold will fuel my, my economy and my armies. She has no military. I'm curious, maybe she has... She was maybe trying to build a unit that was quite expensive. And then she researched a technology that meant she was no longer... Like the unit got more expensive, if that makes sense. And she wasn't able to really afford to continue construction. Right, Kabul is falling. All walls will fall. There is no wall that can stand the test of time against artillery. Sustained artillery bombardment. It's entropy accelerated. Ooh, that would be a fun name for an artillery. Artillery gun, entropy accelerated. I think coming up with names with things... It's one of the most, like, basic, fundamental, like, comedy things that, like, a, a person can do. I like, the, the classic example is, like, yeah, that'd be a good punk band name, you know? I think there's just something really... Oh, God, humans... I think humans just, like, naming things. That's why... And, like, especially humans, like, naming things after themselves. That's why, like, there's a ton of probably, like, scientific principles that are just, like... He's like, oh, I discovered this thing. And then... There's kind of a hint, hint, nudge, nudge. It's like, I discovered this thing. Do you want to, like, name it after me? Like, do a little, do a little naming. Wilhelmina captured Anshan. Okay, so she captured a scientific city-state, which is a bit of a confusing move because that's actually hurt her own science a little bit there. All right, we're blasting. We're blasting. We are blasting. Okay, I love to see this kind of a pace to a conquest. We're bringing in artillery. My favorite thing about the uh, the observation balloon is that it works on catapults. So this is a three-range catapult now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so these actually can now be used in the war effort. So let me do a little bit. I, I, I've noticed that I have like a few units kind of just sitting around doing not very much at all. So let me get a handle on those bad boys and get them moving in the right direction. Okay, everyone's heading left because we're going down here. Oh man, there's so much just juicy. Like if I could get down here into Canada's territory, there's so much juicy territory for me to claim. I'm so excited at the possibility. Now, yeah, I do have gold discounts plugged in. So I'm going to go ahead and promote you. But I'll wait a turn before I eat you because I want to take the promotion on you first. I mean, I can't really stop you if you, like, declare that proposal. Hopefully Sweden stays on my side. My troops are merely passing by. I'm lying, though. Uh, the World's Fair completed. I was definitely bottom of the list. I mean, that is to be expected, in all honesty, based on the standing of the game. All right. So, blast. And I guess it would be good to get a couple of bits of experience on my catapults here. Hang on. Bring up the balloon. Blast. You should get your first tick of XP. I'd really like to level this cavalry so he could get depredation. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that there. Did I lose one of my cavalry? Hang on. No, he's over here. Right. So Kabul is a ticking time bomb. We can go ahead and plant a Mani in there to give us the loyalty that we need. And now it's a question of do we wait for the Golden Age Cass's belly or do we just go in now? Now, is Georgia in a Golden Age? Wilhelmina is not in a Golden Age. Georgia is in a Golden Age, so we're not going to get a combat strength bonus against her. So, and we're not going to be getting it next era because we're going into a Golden Age. Remember that Suleiman's ability gives you plus four combat strength when he's not in a Golden Age against civilizations who are also not in a Golden Age. So that was kind of like the consideration that I was putting together there. You're going to go ahead and take the volley promotion and then by combining these two units with different promotions, this guy's got volley and this guy's got garrison, I actually get a unit with both. So that is the power that is the power so these defensive units are almost in position i still have a little chariot hanging around you may as well go defend the front line the very 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 lightly defended front line even these field cannons aren't super effective until they become machine guns now i really don't need that much in the way of military power to conquer to the west the big battle here 
is going to be with Georgia. So the majority of my forces will be heading to the south. Right, we've got the commercial hub in Halep. Let's go ahead and continue to fuel our economy because we're, we're very, very tight on gold. And when you're tight on gold, even a very, very small amount of gold per turn can actually make a big difference in like the raw amount of gold in your pocket. I'm loving that we're getting a 20% production boost across our empire by conquering stuff too. It really helps make up for the um, amenity losses. I'm hoping I don't get hit by the minus five loyalty there. That would actually be terrifying. Great works of writing can be banned. I would like these and these. I do need to, there was a, there was a consideration about a religious thing, I think. That someone had like a really good religious game going. But I think, um, if I just kill Tamar, that that's no longer a problem that I have to deal with. So speaking of killing Tamar, I think it's time that we declare a war of territorial expansion. This will give me a 25% reduction in grievances rather than a, a zero reduction. So we may as well do that. It's not like a, a perfect Cassus Belly. But it's a reasonable one. We'll bring our balloons forward and now we can start to hammer this. Bring you guys forward. Would love to have logistics plugged in. Just isn't a feasible option for us right now. Artillery produced to go get combined. Um, that was one of the five artillery I needed to build, right? To combine all my units together and get a nice clean setup. So unfortunately, declaring war on Georgia hurt a lot of my GPT. That's okay. Um... We can kind of replace some of those needs, hopefully with all the pillaging that we're going to be doing. Now, this does mean that we're at war with the Congo, actually. Actually, this just crippled my economy. I didn't realize they were allies. I didn't check that. Who has a district slot open? Don't build that armory. Get an aerodrome instead. We're going to have to figure out a way to make a bit of cash here. Let's get rid of these cavalry units because they're in the way. Boom. Cleared out. Um... And we can meet. Well, you should promote. Always take promotions if we can. That's not where I meant to stand you, but you're fine where you are. I'd love to start pillaging with you. We'll just run around a little bit with my units to try and pick up cash. Get in there, lads, and start running amok. I think my cash flow has now become critical. Um, we'll start to run into real issues here without pillages. It's a little bit concerning that Congo is coming at me so hard. Um, but we can trade with Sweden now. That's actually huge. It's like the, the gateway out of this crisis is being able to trade with Sweden. Amazing. Okay, that's actually almost completely fixed our problem. Now, the good news is that we have steel. So we do have the 400 fortification health on our cities, which means it's going to be a, a tough nut for our enemies to crack. I'll tell you who isn't a tough nut. Your mom. Oh, yeah. All right. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know why I'm like though with this. Right. OK, so you need to pillage and swoop away. You need to blast the hell out of this district. Capture it. Is that a dam? We don't want to be pillaging dams. We want to pillage things that actually give us resources. Like Faith, for example. We need to get the raid card plugged in. That's something we can maybe look into when we get our next government. Oh my sweet Christ. Get the archer into the cities. Yes, yeah, so this is what I was talking about going up against the Congo. Um, they just have so much power. Now, the good news is this, artil this little field cannon here is doing enough damage to soften soften them up but we need a lot of field cannons to make this work hopefully a couple of biplanes if i can kind of get them up get a bit of gold when the war with with these guys starts getting like going in earnest i might be able to pull a little bit more cash from the war from the pillaging we're just we're kind of at, we're at we're at an inflection point where many things can go many different directions and right now they're kind of going in every direction until things settle i mean you should just navigate that inflection point right more gold i'm feeling good about that missing trade routes not good um but there's not much i can do about it at the current board state so there's industrialization that's plus one production from mines as well as access to coal and we did in fact have coal like i predicted i think i had predicted it somewhere i don't remember where um but we might be able to kill this unit Perfect, right, so we've, we've killed a unit. I know that doesn't sound particularly impressive, but believe me, it is. The city of Kabul is now repaired and recuperated, ready to contribute to the war effort. It actually has a fully built encampment, believe it or not. So it could start cranking out artillery for me as well. 18 turns until we'd have another artillery army. I think that's a reasonable amount of time. You need to pillage and retreat. Where can I retreat you to safely? You would have to move this way. You would have to move this way. You're moving back. Oh, that's a terrible place I just put you. Little bit of poor micromanagement here on the units. Um, so we've got 13 turns until we have uh, the ability to purchase machine guns. I'm going to be purchasing machine guns with faith in order to defend my capital. But I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not actually worried about the war with Congo. Now, if he was rolling in tanks, I would be worried. But the fact that they're just AT crew, that's like super basic, not scary units. Um, so I have zero fear in my heart right now. Blast him, shoot him. I'm not doing much damage with these guys, but we are leveling up our units. And I think leveling up defensive range units is more valuable than leveling up offensive melee 
anti-cavalry units. Like, Jesus, what a terrible unit to do in a, to mount an offensive with. So one thing that the AI just loves is their anti- is like just sending droves of anti-cavalry units deep in enemy territory. Okay, there's democracy. We are going to switch to democracy because it's slightly better than theocracy. Even though we lose the 15% discount on faith, I think that democracy helps us a lot here. So we definitely want to have levy en masse. We can maybe get away with Limitania. I think our main objective now is to make gold and amenities. So if we can plug in Repub- uh, Republican Legacy... Uh, it could be good to have colonial taxes. New Deal, really helpful. Lots of amenities. Liberalism, lots of amenities. Retainers, lots of amenities. I would love to have logistics plugged in, but it's just not viable right now for me. I think I can take out retainers and plug in raid, actually. Raid is more important. I need that gold. And then serfdom, I think, is our final card. So we should see the amenities of my empire should swing pretty heavily here. I could take Visselbanken. I am trading with Sweden. Would I rather have Machiavellianism? I think I'd rather have colonial taxes, production and gold. So yeah, our amenities are swinging upwards in a very nice way. You can go ahead and pillage there. Now, if you pillage here, can you escape? Not quite. That is okay. We just need to rip down the walls in these cities and then we'll be able to make uh, more meaningful attacks happen. Let's yoink this builder so we can get a better vision of what's happening at Isik. Isik will fall. Time to choose a civic. Ah, there's fascism. We love to see it. Plus five combat strength. War weariness reduced by 15%. This will mean a lot less amenities, but it will mean a lot more combat strength, which I think is more important. I've got a little machine gun roaming through my territory. We can't let that happen. You're doing great. He hasn't... I think, I think he's going for my capital. I can't tell. Observation balloon number two is coming out. That's going to open up the front line a little bit. And um, we probably want observation balloon number three. University repair, escape on foot, 750 gold. That's actually super helpful here. I don't think I have an escape route for you. You might be dead, but I think that was a worthwhile sacrifice. Probably wasn't. Chop here, get that field cannon a little bit sooner. You fortified there, improve that plantation. You actually are going to be coming in handy here to clear out some of these units, even though you're only plinking away. Yeah, my capital city is under, under horrific siege. But I feel we do have the tools to defend it, mostly. All right, keep blasting Isik. There should be a garrison in this city. It was a mistake of me to not have one. Blast you, blast you. This balloon wants to get down to help this eastern front, western front. Let's go ahead and bombard you. Bombard you. You step forward here. I want you to reveal the city of Potti. Then we can blow up the city of Potti. And then you can retreat back to a safe distance. I definitely need more... Cuirassiers. So let me wake up some of my Cuirassiers and bring them down to the front. Uh, you're continuing to build Barbary Corsairs because it actually seems to be working out for me. So I'm going to go ahead and keep doing that. Let's go ahead and get our Grand Bazaars. That's five gold and one amenity compared to just production. We'd rather have that gold. Slowly blasting our way through Georgia, which is your mom's name. Woo yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why the joke is so funny to me. It's such a dumb joke too. It's such a dumb, dumb joke. Um, okay, so things are looking okay. You need to keep retreating. We do need to keep blasting. Get rid of him. Nice. Good kill. Good kill. Good kill. Napoleon Bonaparte. Oh, I forgot I had him. Oh, I totally forgot I had Napoleon Bonaparte. That actually changes things. Yeah, let's teleport him over to the front line so the war effort can be done quicker. Oh, I'm so glad I remember that the, the game reminded me. Again, this is what happens when it's been a while since you've played a game. You know, due to, due to, due to shenanigans. There was, you know... I, 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 well, shenanigans. Well, when I when you realize what I'm what I'm referring to, um, shenanigans is probably the least appropriate word to use. <laughs> wow, I'm actually kind of shocked at myself that I use. Um, I guess I was trying to keep it lighthearted. A gentle eruption has been triggered. That's fine. We would love to deal with that. Blast you, blast you. We just need to get the walls down on this city. You step into party. Uh, you're ready for a promotion, actually, so you won't be firing. Bring down another cavalier. Where's my balloon ass? You could become an artillery, but that's not what we're using that for. We're saving this gold to make machine guns to give us our best chance to actually defend the capital without any losses. Honestly, you could just swoop around and start pillaging a little bit. There's no reason not to. We did manage to get the aerodrome. Let's immediately start on a biplane. How much is a biplane? I'd love to buy one, actually. 1,400. I think a biplane gets me out of a lot of issues here, so I'm going to quickly buy one. Hopefully he doesn't get squished. Don't squish my biplane, please. He's my by plane. So they're trying to make a break for it by running past my cities. Now he's got modern AT as well as AT crews. Go ahead and take the arrow storm promotion. That'll give you enough pl another plus seven combat strength to where you're actually still doing decent damage. I love the idea of like modern AT crew with uh, like all the bells and whistles and like rocket guided missiles and all that sort of stuff. And then there's this like a dude with like a 1800s <laughs> field cannon just pew! 
just fires little cannonballs at him. Although I suppose uh, cannon, cannons don't make a pewing noise. What a strange invention that like guns were so violent and dangerous that we needed to come up with like a social technology to make guns sound like cute. Like pew, pew, pew. Right, so my cavalier over here has been taking hits. Let's go ahead and pop him back into Kabul. You're taking over. You're in here doing the pillaging. And right, let's wake up the biplane. The biplane's going to be a big savior because it does a ton of damage to units and it has a really good range. There we go. That's that guy dealt with. Uh, you're going to go ahead and take Grape Shot. That'll give you a little bit more combat strength against some of these guys. We'll blast you here. We'll blast you there. You blast him. Don't let him escape. We're being pushed over here. You continue to retreat. Uh, you're going to go ahead and take the volley promotion. We also need to promote, promote you, like upgrade you. Everything in due time. Everything in due time. You need to go ahead and steal cash from me. Oh, actually, I need to cancel your mission because you've actually leveled up. So abort your mission and we'll level you up next turn. You go there. 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 You eat him. Observation balloon crossed the river. Come in. Chipping away at Isik. So we're, we're in what I would consider to be the the difficult phase of a domination victory which is where you haven't snowballed yet and we're just slowly grinding our way through uh the enemy like they're like they're bags of meat you have a promotion available you also have a promotion available your promotion is less important so i'll go ahead and promote this guy instead and this means now we could capture the city but i think more importantly we're going to run around and pillage the hell out of this city because it's worth a lot of resources to us you upgrade you eat oh you're already an army never mind you can't eat him uh, i regret that choice now um see i really need to get i really need to get this biplane over here to kabul because it would give me the spotting so like with the observation balloon and the biplane we would have air control which would give us the ability to like spot and pick our targets and know exactly where we need to shoot we also need to kill this encampment here okay so he's finally starting to hit the city aquila and a couple of cities like he's the, the congo have found their legs and have started to hit back. And it's not an insignificant amount of damage that he's done, but I don't think biplanes are necessary anymore. Oh, this is a great opportunity to get a kill here, actually. That's huge. Stepped a unit into the water. Another turtle made it to the water. Right, so biplane, I want to relocate you over to Kabul, but I'll put you in Johannesburg for now because that will reveal potty. We can start to blast this encampment. We can get a good lineup on this one. Uh, you go ahead and take expert crew, even though we don't need it because we have plus one movement on you guys. You're going to swivel back to be defended. You pop into the water. You pop this way. You pop this way. You pop this way. Blast the Scythia of Iuthia. You're going to pillage for health. Get rid of all these nasty little little uh, line infantry floating around, causing issues. You head to the front line because you're going to get combined. We definitely need more artillery. What's the oil situation looking like? We probably can't really afford much more oil. Let me have a little look at the oil conquest situation. We are going to pick up an oil from conquest over here and a little bit of oil from conquest over here. So I think we can continue to push the bounds of what oil we have. Did I see any more oil over here, actually? A little bit of oil in Yerevan. Just not a very oil-heavy map, to be frank. Which means I'm likely going to have to step away from artillery production, which is fine. That's okay. Also, 400 gold for pillaging a preserve feels good. Let's turn you into a field cannon so you do respectable damage there. You go back and repair these. You were kicked out of your location. Sabotage production is fine. Don't particularly care. Go ahead and steal. Sorry, you need to promote first. Um, disguise is fine so you'll get in cities quicker. Promotion available on this guy. Now, I'm going to be taking promotions uh, often because I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that by taking the promotions early, they will translate into a late game advantage. Um, now, that doesn't, you know, not taking your promotions and continuing to press also translates into a late game advantage. So it can be hard to know when to do and when not to do. If that makes sense. I'm surprised you only have two movement. Do I not have logistics plugged in? No, I have raid plugged in. Okay, yeah, I know that makes sense. So your job is to keep the city suppressed in health. Well, your job is to take out this encampment. Now, it looks like her first, our AT crews have started to come out, which is very annoying because it's going to make all these districts a lot harder to kill. And it also means I have to navigate much more carefully with my cuirassiers. I could take Ak Akal Kalaki, um, but I would like to take Ayuthia first so that I have a triangle of loyalty pushing in. And I'd also like to do a little bit more damage to Potty first. Let's go ahead and deploy you to here. And we can start to use you to sweep away some of these infantry. All right, blast you. He is going to get into my trade route, sadly. There's not much I can do about that. Um, there's a lot I can do about you, though. In your own way, blast you, blast you, blast you. 
And then one final blast. Um, I think Tbilisi. I'd like to go to Tbilisi and then establish you as um, a spy to give me diplomatic visibility because I'm missing, I think. Yeah, I could, ha I could have a plus three combat strength bonus against him, which would be fantastic. What level is the spy actually? He needs one more level. One more level and then he'll be max rank, which is good. Okay, let's kill this AT. Oh, you don't have range. Hang on. Kill that AT crew. Soften up that district. Two people shoot the city of Poti. Bring back you. You shoot there. Perfect. Biplane, blast him. Blast him. Uh, blast that guy. Shoot there. Kill that machine gun thingy. A de air gun, rather. Okay, we're, we're sitting pretty. We're looking okay. We got another artillery army. We're officially neutral on oil. Um, I think I'm going to avoid building any more units just for a little while. We're going to go into eco mode to eke out an advantage. Here's the thing. I'm winning, but I'm winning slowly. You take Ayuthia. Perfect. Observation balloon move here. Then it can blast the city of Isik, meaning all the prep work that we've done here comes to fruition. Make sure we kill all these random units. You need to pop back for a heal. You can hit this guy. Uh, we need to protect him. So Ayuthia is now mine. We have a look at the loyalty situation in here. You're disloyal. You're disloyal. Who do I have that I could move? Victor could move. And honestly, oh God, Pingala was booted again. Honestly, it's a good time to move him. To move him to Ay Ayuthia. Because once we capture Isik and Pokrovka, that'll be a huge loyalty boost in here. And now actually, I think it's safe for me to take Akagal... Akagalaki, right? Even though we didn't get all the pillages that we wanted. Now that we have this city, we can keep it and move Reina to there. And now we're looking like we're, we're starting to crack the code. We've cracked it. We've cracked the code. I'm cracked. I'm like a cracked up white boy, as the kids say today. Do, do people actually say that, like unironically? I don't think, you know, do what, people unironically say goaded with the sauce? I don't know. We do a little chopping. We do a little chopping. You're heading to the front line. Excellent. Oh, look at these ironclads. Look at them go. Now, Georgia is begging me for peace. She, she just sent me in. She sent me a request. She was like, hey, uh, what's up, bro? Uh, you got armies on my border. Peace, please. And I was like, nah, I'm good. I'm good, bruh. Uh, Jelonis, 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 Jelonis. Jelonis brothers. Kill the city. We're perfect. We're happy. We're beautiful. We're all having a good day. I hope. Blast him. Shoot him. Just, you know, we got a lot of, we got a lot of, like, stragglers roaming around. He did kill our trade routes. Wait, no, our trade routes escaped. Perfect. Uh, we did get a trader here. Trade with Stockholm. 12 gold per turn. Thank you. Keeping that empire alive. So I think I look at the Ambanza Mpangu. If I could get a line of artillery along these hills here, I could start to bombard that city. And that would be it. We are, st we're, we're, like I said, we're starting to hit the inflection point where our science and culture and our, our stuff is starting to become very, very difficult for people to stop. We're hitting the upward curve. The problem is this, this, damn city just completely one shots me and I need the pillages that's the big issue we're facing it's just the fact that we're having a really hard time getting the pillages that we want I mean I, I'm getting some pillages for sure but I'm not getting as many right and that's that's kind of starving us for gold and the big problem is we don't have tanks yet if we had tanks we, we would have a lot more freedom to go where we please and attack where we please and do what we need and pillage everything like there's a couple of mines down here that I'd love to get my hands on my grubby little paws if we can get in here scooch you down a tile blast and blast party should fall very quickly actually its fall is accelerating okay modern era in three turns this is actually going to be big for us on the loyalty front because that is somewhere that we're still having a little bit of an issue and um, in particular in like cities like over here i need to get the loyalty up can i quickly switch someone over to you gelinus just to get you positive loyalty so you don't flip independent yeah all right we'll blast isik a little we'll take isik we'll move you along we'll keep the city we got a little bit of a loyalty issue there we're gonna have to do a little juggling mostly just negative pressure but again in three turns we head to the modern era we head into a golden age and it's a quite literal ottoman you know golden age of, of, of beauty and friendship and just complete utter just everything is going to be going perfect for us there's our third observation balloon i don't think i need a fourth right now what i would much rather work on is like something like a harbor to get a little bit of extra gold in the bank so that's what we'll do I think we have a big enough army to make things happen on the on, on the board. And now we just need to to sort of put a little bit of an economy behind that so we don't run out of steam. 
No, the good news is you can just con continue to blast this. I love the fact that the observation balloon is movable, means that you can actually have way more units than you would expect to be able to actually fire using it. I think ideally I would have even more artillery, but I need to be careful about how fast I burn through my oil stockpile because I'm not going to be getting many replenishments. It look, looks like the Congo completely burnt his army against my empire. He did have over a thousand combat strength, but just from like navigating and having units in very careful positions, I was able to completely whittle him down to nothing, which means all of that investment into that army, he got nothing for it, um, which is j like the best case scenario possible for me. Boom, we pillage, right? 400 gold from a mine. Really good. Every time I get a pillage off like that, that just like, that just adds just a little something to my empire that, that's, that's keeping me going. It might not seem like much, but it is making a difference. I definitely want to get my biplane leveled up as well. So I'm going to continue to slamming cities. Now, if someone's going for a culture victory, I can already hear it. But I think I should be able to generate enough culture as long as I kill... Sweden last, we should be able to make this work. All right, pot tea. The pot tea is starting to go. Shells. There we go, there we go. Pot tea is falling. You're actually supposed to go to the west to join one of these catapults when they get upgraded, which is going to be part of the plan. And there it is. You move up here. You can step out of the city and then promote. You can move up here. Balloon in position. We'll start bombing that city next turn. Or, well, not bombing. We're, we start shelling that city. Computers. I don't think I need computers. I would really like to get offshore oil rigs. I think there was tanks were in one of these two brackets. So I'm going to go ahead and research this in the hope that tank is in this technology right there. I'd, I'd like to have tanks. Tanks would make a difference here. Even just one tank would mean I would be able to send in one of my tank armies to start like pillaging stuff. Uh, the pillaging would mean I'd be able to get another tank army and then the snowball would really start to coalesce. All right, nice. There's the pillage. Can we sneak in and maybe get another pillage or two? Yeah, we can. A little bit of extra culture. That means we're a step closer to fascism. And the reason that we want fascism is because it gives us that plus five combat strength on all of our units. It's like having another technology level. Plus five combat strength might not sound like much, but believe me, it actually makes a rather large difference. All right, it's all coming together here. He's throwing modern AT crews at me, but I don't think they're going to have the effect that he needs them to have. So she's begging me for peace, but I refuse. The modern era ends in one turn. There's communism. We're seven turns from fascism. You can start to blast that city. And we will. Pokrovka. Start blasting the city of Solika. Very, very easy kill there. In fact, my, my, my ironclad might be able to just grab these cities with the assistance of these boats. We definitely want to kill Yerevan as well. We're going on like a hyper-aggressive game. We need to keep the gold flowing. We're not switching to communism, so we're not going to change our government right now because communism technically would be like a side grade from our co current government form. And uh, we're only really looking for a government upgrade, which is why we're looking for fascism because that fascism works really, really well for war stuff. Let's go ahead and take on Potty. Huge. We now control another Georgian city. And now it's just a matter of like whittling away at... Chumi, Tbilisi, Rastavi. I don't think she has much more beyond that. There might be another city or two in the fog of war. But uh, the turning point, the turning point is coming, my friends. It is almost upon us. So I'm thinking about positioning one, two, three. We'll want to be positioned alongside this axis here. Start hitting to Shumi. Oh, I'm really looking forward to my next golden age. It's going to be a game changer. Here we go. Golden Atomic Age. Very nice, right? Look at that golden age. Who else got a golden age? I can't tell. Basically everyone except the Congo. Any loyalty flips? Oh, Singapore flipped independent. It's flipping back to the Congo, though. Could be an opportunity to swoop in and grab it. I mean, look at the combat strength on that city. Wait a minute. It's genuinely an opportunity to steal. If I swoop in here with an artillery and a blast, I need, I need, a, I need a capture unit. You. You're in position. Pillage for gold. So this will delay our other front slightly, which I'm okay with. It's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Um, so how are we blasting? Okay, I think we need to clear out some of these units just because there's a lot of them. Get them done. Boom, boom. You're almost promoted. Solica is falling. And we just got advanced ballistics and stuff like that. We definitely want to get uranium. We discovered chemistry, which is not the tech that we wanted. Let's go ahead and research electricity. I never built military engineers. I definitely need to get my hand on a couple. Let's go ahead and do this. We'll switch in in Athens and in Eritrea. We'll get our military engineers. We could probably also justify getting one in fire slows because I want to get those I want to get those railroads built to keep units being able to move around so I can move units from one front to the other. Let's run and hide. Do a little bombing. You shoot there, you shoot there. He probably will level up off all that activity. Government Plaza got obliterated again. I hate I I think I'm never building my government plaza on a floodplain ever again. I usually I never build them there, and for good reason. And I know that reason now. But we're in a golden age, right? We have massive 2.199 loyalty coming in here. 
even Georgian cities are starting to crumble under my loyalty wave. And if we can kind of break in to this southern area, we might not even have to kill the Congo early. We can switch over to killing Wilhelmina. I, I kind of need to keep Congo alive because he's my best defense against Wilhelmina. So I, I may have to come down here, sweep most of the continent, leave the Congo on like a city or something, and uh, then come over here and deal with the Netherlands. But I tell you what, we're making good progress. The snowball has begun. I love you all very much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.